All right, how's it going, you guys? It's here with 3100 here today, and today I'm going to be showing you how to rip vinyl using a turntable using a mixer. We're using the Newmark M6 USB mixer in this case to rip the vinyl. Now, um, first, uh, you have to have a turntable. Um, make sure it's multi speed or whatever. I mean, every turntable will work, it's just the audio source. And speaking of audio source, you're going to need a, a record. I'm using this um, really old vinyl record here. Um, let's take it out of its casing here, lay it down on here. It's got a couple scratches, so obviously bought it used. And we're just gonna, uh, we're gonna focus on a song here. Uh, let's just focus on, uh, 16 Candles or Runaway or whatever. And it's got multiple tracks here. So we're gonna see that Runaway is number three. So we're gonna turn on the turntable here. You can see we're at 33. Make sure it's the right size. It's telling you, um, I know this one runs at 33. It's an LP. Um, not all of them do. Some run at 45, <clears throat> some run at 78. Uh, make sure if you do have a tempo control, make sure it's either in the middle clicked or there's a light. Or in this case, you can also just click the light. So even if you're not in the middle, it's always there. Um, key lock, if you, I mean, if you want to, key lock is a digital add-on that will help. You don't always, not all turntables have these features, but um, just, um, just focus on making it sound good. So now uh, we have the record on here. We're going to turn on the mixer. So you can see the mixer's on. Turn on our amplifier. My focus isn't that good here. And uh, we're just going to turn off surround sound so you guys can hear it a little bit better. And we're going to choose, um, it is the third track. So that's one, two, should be this one here. Should hear it. <laughs> So as you can see, the you can hear the record. Um, in terms of wiring, I mean, if you've gotten this far, you should be able to hear the record. But um, let's just go over some wiring real quick. Um, this uh, turntable has uh, two settings. Most turntables will have one, but uh, this turntable has two settings. Uh, let me show you that real quick. All right. So starting out, I put my turntable propped up. I just I didn't want to damage too much and. The lighting is not that good as you can use the shadow but um, we have an output there's actually a usb connection digital output and power and ac in um this is a dj turntable so um not these features are uh, pretty much used not all the time but um not all turntables will have these features most turntables will have an output ac in and a power they usually don't have these things here it, it should just have most turntables will have an output uh ac in or just a plug coming out and power some might just even have cables coming out. Um, so just forget about all the other features. I mean, those are for later. Um, this output can be changed, just to put it in perspective. Um, it has phono and line. What does that mean? Well, as you saw, I was putting this turntable into this mixer and then into the uh, amplifier. The reason is this amplifier doesn't have a phono amplifier. So it needs to go here as a pre-amplifier and then go to the actual amplifier. Uh, that's because I don't I want to bypass the built-in amp. I don't think that the built-in amp in this turntable is good enough to listen to records personally. It, it sounds flat to me. So I like to have more control by putting it through this mixer that has a phono preamp. And it tells you phono or line. Same thing. Phono or line. Um, if you put it to phono or phono, whatever you want to say, phonograph, whatever, um, it plays the record without touching it or amplifying it. There's no amplification done. So the signal coming out of this output is very weak. Most turntables are like this. Sure, you have AC in and power, but that's really only to turn the uh, turntable uh, and whatever comes off of the needle is actually just fed out into here without any amplification. And then you have the phono in line. Then it goes to the uh, the mixer, and on the mixer it gets amplified to line level, which is why there's phono and line. It gets amplified to line level, and there's also some equalization done on it. You can also mess with it with the EQ or the gain, the volume. Then you have your master. It goes out through the master, and it goes into the amp, and that's how you can hear the music. Um, if you want to take this out of the equation, you would just simply switch it to line, 
grab some RCAs and plug it directly into here and you're done. It's that simple. But again, most turntables don't have this feature. Most turntables just come out as phonograph. I'm just pointing that out because with this turntable, you don't need a mixer to rip your vinyl. You can just uh, set it. You don't even have to set this. You just plug in USB and you're done. It, uh, it shows up as a sound card on your computer and you can rip your vinyl that way. But I'm focusing on using a mixer to rip your vinyl. I just wanted to point that out just to make sure everyone's on the same page. All right, now real quickly, let's talk about the inputs. Um, this input phono, as you can see here, is going to my um, turntable. Now, it also has a grounding pin. This turntable actually self-grounds into the RCA, so you're not going to see that. Some turntables will have like a little uh, Y yoke type of thing that you'll unscrew this, plug it in, and it'll help ground the system. If you still experience some noise, like buzzing usually, you can actually grab your RCAs, solder a wire to them, and then put that wire on the uh, outside shield. You solder that wire onto the... Um, into the ground. That can help. I mean, again, I've never had to do it. I've never experienced that much noise. It's going into the phonograph, um, just so you know, and then on it says channel one, and channel one right here is also saying phono. Um, what I'm hearing is coming out of the master output. These, these RCAs here are going to the amplifier. There's also balanced outputs and such, um, and then there's also the USB. We're going to focus on that. The master output is a direct copy to the USB coming out. So these two are the same, except one's analog and one's digital. Analog can be fed to an amp and digital can be fed to your computer because it has that USB symbol. Just so you know, I mean, I'm just trying to explain the best I can. You're gonna need a USB cable to get the signals out of it. And I'll show you how to do that. You just, usually this mixer actually comes with a USB cable that will plug into here. You also need to have power going to the device. So here I have my uh, USB cable. This didn't even come with the, this came, there was one that came with the mixer. It was just a white one, but I think this one's a bit better for me just because it's a little longer. Uh, it's just simple. You just plug it in. It's that simple. And you're done. I mean, there's nothing else to do. All right, next step is uh, working with the computer. We just uh, get on our computer here. It's going to be simple. I mean, why, why should it be so hard to rip some vinyl? You grab this and make sure your mixer is on before you do it. Just make sure the mixer is on. And uh, you don't have to worry about anything on here. I know this one says USB. You don't have to worry about that. That's only for input, not output. Um, again, as I said before, the USB is a direct copy of the master. So whatever's going through these U VU meters is going to be on your recording. Whatever you hear through the speaker, if you're plugged into master, is what you're going to get on your recording, just so you understand. Um, you plug your USB into the computer from the mixer. It's kind of a tighter fit because of the flash drive. And um, <clears throat> you should see it. If you, uh, I'm, I'm on a Mac, but it should be simple on a, on a Windows computer. Uh, and if you go to system preferences and you go to sound, you should see under input, you should see USB audio codec, which is uh, the mixer. Because if I unplug the mixer, if I unplug the USB, it goes away. If I plug in the USB cable, it should show up there. Yeah, there you go. See how there's an input level? If we play a record and we hear it through the speakers, we'll be able to hear it there. If I snap, there's no input level because it's not the microphone. It's actually the, um, if I pick internal mic, you can hear my voice. If I snap, you can see it on the mic. And this is also a VU meter so you can see what's going through it. So let me just set up a record and then we'll be able to make sure that we can see it so we can set our levels correctly. All right, so I set up my record. I found a cue point. So when I press play, it's going to play the song I want. I, I also backed up a little bit. So um, there's some time in and some time out uh, when I do it because you can also crop that in the uh, editing software. So if you can hear... So as you can hear, I uh, created a, like I added some time in the beginning so we can record. Let's focus real quick on uh, setting your levels. I'm going to turn off my amp because I just want to focus on the LEDs. I'm focusing on the Newmark M6 mixer just so you know, uh, just to show you how to set your levels. 
So if you start the record, you can see these are your levels here. You want your levels to be roughly around minus four, minus two, and zero. Don't go higher than zero though, because that's gonna cause clipping. You, anything above zero decibels is clipping. Even though it has some soft clipping here and it can handle it, you don't want that in your, your recording. Now that's your master. You wanna focus more on these here. Now it's kind of sad that they only give you three really because the plus six is kind of too much. But um, you wanna focus on keeping this one lit at all times, this minus 10 if you have my mixer. Um, now notice how, as I said before, the phono is just directly of what's coming off the needle and there's no amplification done. So even at max value, max gain actually, I didn't, sorry, I, didn't, I wasn't supposed to say volume, max gain, it never touches zero. So that's good. I mean, you kind of saw it there. Um, but again, you just, I'm going to back it off a little bit because you can, you can kind of tweak the settings in the software to make it slightly louder, slightly quieter. But as you can see here, we're around minus two, so that's good. Just make sure that these are in the greens and flashing occasionally in the yellow. Um, because even though it's in yellow, you still have a slight possible amount of clipping. Um, you can also add your EQ here if you want to. I like to keep it flat because the software can do the EQ. Um, I'm not going to show you that. I'm just going to show you how to record. Uh, but again, just try to focus on that zero. Try to focus on that zero and just staying slightly below it. It can hit it, but just try to stay slightly below it because you can always go uh, louder. You can't really uh, get rid of clipping easily. So um, yeah, just focus on that. And if you can see here, um, it's playing from the mixer. Uh, and we have those three bars here and it's peaking right there roughly around these two and it's not clipping there's really no clipping indicator on here because it's digital digital can't clip in a way that's an analog thing so just um i i like to trust the mixer more but um yeah just for me if you're on a mac the, those minus three and four that's kind of like i guess zero as you see it peaked all the way up there so again just uh you might have to do multiple recordings even i mean it all depends on uh where you're at so we'll just uh, put it back on the beginning of the, the record and we're going to start the recording process. All right, in terms of uh, getting Audacity, you can just Google it and it should come up and you should see a thing that says download and it should say either Windows or Mac and it should be as simple as that. For a Mac, when you get it, uh, when you open up the disk image, it's just going to tell you to drag and drop the folder into your applications. On Windows, there may be an installation. Um, so we're going to open up Audacity here by just pushing A on the keyboard. Um, personally, if you have the time, get Adobe Audition. It, I believe it's a much better software for uh, audio editing, but Audacity is in the hands of multiple people. Anybody can get Audacity. So uh, here it is. Now we're going to tell it to record. It's simple. What you do is see how there's a microphone there? Look what it chose. It chose USB audio codec, recording device, stereo. You want stereo, you want left and right. And it's gonna output built-in output. You can also do it on the mixer, but we're just gonna do it on here for now. So yeah, it's simple. It's already selected. USB audio codec, stereo channels, and we're gonna check our levels. And it should give us a way to, to do that. So um, let's uh, press play on the record and see if we can get any of uh, any uh, I guess things here now real quick um, project file and stuff you shouldn't have to worry about it for most for most projects 44 1 should be fine because we're recording off of the the mixer and that's our limitation if you don't know what it means just leave it as is it should be fine but with this mixer 44 1 I believe is it's is it's uh, limits in terms of a uh, sampling rate um, you shouldn't go too crazy but um what you do is see how up here Sorry, my focus isn't the best. Uh, it says click to start monitoring here on the microphone. And it's USB audio codec on that microphone. You click and there's some signal. If I start the, if I uh, hit the, the turntable, the vibrations get put into there and in turn gets put into the mixer. Those vibrations travel through and it shows up on here. So when you're recording vinyl, you want to be sure that you have the record player either on top of a towel or something that'll absorb vibration so you don't get vibration in your recording. Again, I don't really like to rip my vinyl because most of my vinyl I own isn't like rare and you can find them online. Uh, I just love listening to them. I mean, recording them for my personal use would be nice, but some people have better 
uh, rips out there that are already cleaned up with noise and they have a better noise floor and are probably even remastered. But anyways, uh, to record, it's simple. You can, uh, you can find your levels, <clears throat> excuse me, you can find your levels on here. Now notice when I talk, you can actually hear it through the needle because it's picking up my voice. When you play the record, now notice, uh, as I said before, the zero and minus two minus four, same thing, except here it's a different uh, scale. There's zero at the very top, minus three, minus six, minus nine. You want to stick around that minus six, minus three mark as you're peaking. And notice, as I said before, in the digital world, there's no such thing as clipping. After it goes zero, it's just distorted. It squares off. In the analog world, there's a soft clipping. As you can see, there's zero and it has uh, the ability to go higher because it can handle more. Digital can't. So that's why, again, you want to stay below that zero mark. So we're going to try to record. I'm going to add some uh, space between the start. And we're just going to hit record here. As you can see, I'm just going to press record. Count to one or two or something. You can also close the audio track. Uh, you hit record. And you count to one or two, then you push play. You just want to add a buffer because you can always cut, but you can never add. You can always trim it, but you can never met, you can never fix the recording you just made. So I'm going to hit record and then press play. And I'm going to let the record play through and I'm going to edit it. And then you're going to see the, the finished product. I'm going to let it play for a second and press play. Now, notice I didn't really talk as the record was ending, and there's some pops and clicks, as you can see. I didn't speak while the record was ending, and also, it's not always a good idea to have your speakers, and I also have a subwoofer under there. It's not always a good idea to have your um, speakers on while you're recording so close to the vinyl, or the record, I meant to say, is because uh, it's not always a good idea because the vibrations in the speakers and the vibration in the subwoofer and any type of vibration will get picked up by the, the stylus, the needle, whatever you want to call it, and to get transferred into your recording. Um, so <clears throat> if you're doing this and you get used to it, the first couple of times, maybe practice with the speakers on and stuff, just so you hear what's going on. But um, also with this, where you can actually, if you turn off the, the level, you can hear uh, the sound through the, um, the, uh, the stylus. You can you can kind of make out uh, the the sound that comes out of the the stylus here. One sec, let me just try to get a better example. You could probably hear that that uh, you can hear the sound coming out of the stylus. You want to leave it like that because that's how sensitive it is uh, to speakers and everything around. If you if you have like stomping or if you have a car passing by outside, that could affect the recording. And you just want to be sure that you get the best possible recording or else why would you be ripping your vinyl? Um, so yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. When you're done with that, um, notice how when the record stopped, there were pops and clicks. I let it play out. You don't want to stop it too quickly because there's also a, a fade out function and stuff like that. You might have to watch a tutorial on how to use Audacity first just to be comfortable with the software. I've used it a couple times and I feel pretty comfortable. Once you're done with that, I felt like that recording was pretty good. I felt the levels were all right. If you notice, I didn't really get a good picture of it, but around minus six, it starts to turn orange and then red. It peaked around minus three and it was kind of reddish orange. So yeah, there although there's also the LEDs, but um, once you're done, as you can see, we, we're done uh, getting that. You can hit export audio under file, export audio or shift command E on Mac. And that's the audio we're talking about here. It exports as a WAV. You want to keep it as a WAV if you want to keep, um, uh, what's it called? You want to keep it as a WAV if you want to keep the quality. If you want to shrink it, you just go to MP3 file. And you click that. And uh, for vinyl, you want to just go to Insane, which is 320, because you're not really losing too much, really. Uh, if you really want to reduce the quality of your recording, you're going to end up choosing Extreme or Standard. I would choose 320, variable, I would keep it constant. I don't know how you would do that actually. Um, preset, I mean. 
I've never really used this exporting. Use, use stereo, don't use joint stereo. Uh, and then I guess fast, whatever. I've never really used this that well. It's gonna spit it out. I wanna choose it to spit out on the desktop. We'll hit save, uh, location. If you don't have lame, which is the MP3 encoder, uh, you would have to get it. As you see, it says, it says download. Hit okay. Uh, it couldn't open. I don't have it, so I'm just gonna, I don't have the encoder. Uh, so we're just gonna use WAV. It's uncompressed, so there's no options. It just spits out whatever's there. You can set um, the you can set the year and the track and the artist here, and then you just hit um, OK. I'm not going to do that because I'm not really planning on saving this. Um, and as you can see, Untitled Wav. If we listen to it, So that's, that's my recording. It's that simple. Now, it, it can be a pain um, doing that because this has multiple tracks. And if you're doing a whole LP, you're going to have to stop, save, and spit out the file. Um, some programs, I know Newmark has one, but I believe it only works with their uh, turntables that have the built-in USB sound card, um, will actually have an auto-recreate track. So you're just, you're get, when you just play it, and when it notices there's a gap, it'll cut it, turn that into an individual file, go on to the next one, record it. It'll do it continuously, and when it gets to the end, it spits them out into a folder or wherever you want. I've never used this software, but using Audacity, it's pretty simple. Uh, I just wanted to go again over the workflow and knowing what everything does, so it kind of took me a bit longer, and how to use Audacity in a basic way, and how to set your levels, which I believe is one of the most important parts, setting the correct levels, because if you're too loud, it's going to sound really bad on the end. If it's too quiet, bringing it up, you notice the pops and clicks and the rumble, you're going to end up making that rumble pop and clicks. All those are going to become louder and it's going to ruin the recording. So you want to have a nice in between, not too loud, not too quiet, just to keep the best quality you can. Anyways, uh, if this isn't simple enough or if I should simplify it more um, or if you have any in individual questions, feel free to leave a comment or send me a message. I'll try my best to get back to you. Again, this is Hugo 33100 here today and if I helped you, uh, please tell me in the uh, comments or again, any questions, comments or anything you want to ask me down there. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hugo 33100 here today. As always, like, comment and subscribe for more videos.